and especially having a terminal illness. Mm-hmm. People are people are along the way, but I go for all. On a we are to find a nini eventually. We shall get a hippo. So I've seen people walking away after this, mm-hmm. and uh, one of them happened to be my wife. I don't blame her anyway. Mm-hmm. It's only human to, to, to feel that way at some point. I don't blame her because I know maybe somewhere else someone may do the same thing. And um, <laughs> she left me when I needed her most, actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it's okay. I nearly sleep at night because when I sleep, especially flat, I'm never unable to breathe. Kapsa. So I turn this chair to be an <laughs> expert for me. Mm-hmm. And most of the time I sleep in this chair seated all night because Nikila life flat is kapsa. And the fear of lying flat, I'm unable to wake. To even support myself, Niamke. So you sleep seated most yeah, of the time? Most of the time, yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. I sleep seated. And sometimes I can sometimes spend an hour standing. Mm-hmm. Because I don't get to me. Mm-hmm. Well, nothing in oneself beats a good harmony between the mind, body, and spirit. I'm talking about your health. James Morethi has known no such harmony for the last three years and is had to survive with three failed organs in his body. Welcome to today's episode of my story with me, Kevin Phillips Momani, and this is his story. Mm-hmm. Hi, bro. Yes, my name is James Morevi Chege. I'm 29 years old. I'm first born in a family of five, two girls and three boys. Um, I don't have a family for now, but I was having a family that was separated due to some issues. Early 2018, that's when I got sick. Mm-hmm. And uh, I went to the hospital complaining about headaches. No more headaches. Uh, I was diagnosed with typhoid by then and given medication for it. It took me about two weeks, medication stopped, but the same problem came back again. Mm-hmm. And this, this time, kitchen uh, woman vomit, and it was very painful. We tried all the medication, but we could so that was in around between between February and April 2018. When the medication stopped, I went back to the hospital. Mm-hmm. This time, nothing was I was diagnosed with nothing apart from the headaches. So I was given medi- painkillers to treat the the headaches and some general weakness in the body. Mm-hmm. I could wake up, I don't want to do anything, or I'm not unable to do anything on my own. To me, I treated that as kuchokato. Ile unasema ni miyamfanya kazi kwa wiki mzima, ni choka. Those by kitchen auma. Take a glass of water, you sleep. For a few hours, there's no headache. The next day happens, the same thing. And uh, around June 2018, that's when I seeked for the medication for it. I went to Kenyatta and uh, a doctor, a nurse who is a friend of mine, uh, noticed I might have a problem bigger than I, we could thought of it. 
So she told me to take my BPS and to my supplies or to her supplies. Um, any other person. Like for me, I didn't know about how precious how blood pressure should be. I didn't know. Mm -hmm. So to her surprise, my BPs were way, way, way above the number rates. Way above. Around 256 over 146. <coughs> Sorry. Sorry. Um, uh, that nurse told me, uh, she, she explained to me that my BPs, they are abnormal. That's why I'm having those headaches as vomiting. Uh, it's still like that for three days now trying to get the medication and because it was the end so uh, to the end of June early July I was admitted in Kenyatta mm -hmm. and uh, that's when the doctors told me that my BPs has been abnormal for a while without knowing mm -hmm. BP is funny. Hayumi, na hauhisi. You don't feel. You're just there, and BP is there. Up. When I was admitted, I I found out that the one side of my body, the left side, there, had started going numb to a point I couldn't feel anything. I remember one day. I was making tea on my own. Na chai kenda kumwagika. Na bila kutafuta kitu ya kushika sufuria, nishika na mkono tu. A hot sufuria. Na sikuchomeka. Now, that this one, sasa nakumbuka niko kwenye Kenyatta. Mhm. Nisha admit ya kwamba nishika sufuria moto na sikuchomeka. This side has already started going numb. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And uh I was very close, very close to an attack. Very close. Luckily, I did or rather, I did hospital in my Actually, I walked in the hospital on my own. I did not go to the Between these three days, I had done an MRI because my worry was why, when I was on a kitchen, 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 Maybe it's like one cancer or a trauma. So I did an MRI to confirm. Actually, I went there straight, knowing very well I'm going to confirm. I got my nanny called cancer. I I'm a trauma. So the MRI confirmed nothing, and uh, I was happy that no one, to, no one wants to get sick, especially at 26 years of age by then. Mm -hmm. So that's why we to live on BP it alone now after three days. So in Kenyatta, I started medication immediately. And after running so many tests, the doctor confirmed the worst. Something I never thought in my life in Ezekua. Mm -hmm. That Yakwamba, I have issues with kidney and <coughs> I'm at the end stage. That is the, uh, the end stage of Reno, or later ASL, mm. something, CKD. And uh, I needed to do, to be on medication. Mm -hmm. I stayed in Kenyatta for three months. Now, the root cause of kidney failure is bad for three months. And uh, what we did is to Regularize the BPs. To regularize, siku kujia chini, na nikapefa rusa kwenye nyumbani in the medication. Now going home, eh, in my entire life, sija kwa mgonjwa. Apart from zero, no more headaches, and no more flus. So this time now, nimepa wa madawa, sija ikunyo madawa. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> the result of my excess water in this chest, that is. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Sada, I'm going to 
zilinigeuka pia and uh, my skin turned from brown to dark and I started peeling off so I went back to the hospital the does the medication was changed na nikaka nyumbani wakati mada zilisha ah uh, tena ile kitu ya kumona kichwa and vomiting and this time around sasa nimefura mwili mwili wote from a weight of 61 2006 within two weeks and uh, I took a trip to see my sister who is my donor because by the time I was living Kenyatta the doctor then my nephrologist has told me that I need a transplant so I went to kidney inform, transplant yes kidney transplant eh? mm-hmm. I went to see my sisters and inform them that I need a, a kidney and uh, <laughs> one of them have to give me a kidney or rather I requested because in Kenya sheria zikubali mume wala upewe na mtu nje it starts with the siblings when you are now pia sheria ikubali wazazi kupe kidney so I started doing that my sister mm-hmm. coming back siku kaka actually I went and spent the night and came back Nairobi because I was to see a doctor eh uh, traveling back I started seeing not clear. This time round, my BP had shoot to an unrecordable state that the machine couldn't read them mm-hmm. anymore and I started losing sight. Mm-hmm. Yes, I have issues the excess sight from uh, Kitambo, but this time round I went black kabisa. I couldn't see anything. Mm-hmm. So I took myself to Kenyatta again. This time round I was accompanied by my cousin. She took me there and uh, I was admitted in Mitri in Nairobi state and I stayed in Kenyatta now for another two months seven so ward 787 and 8 doing some tests here and there <laughs> that's when the doctors has confirmed that I have an aphrotic syndrome and uh, my kidneys cannot get back to their state mm-hmm. And the only solution to my life now is to be on dialysis for the next life or do a kidney transplant. Mm-hmm. Uh, these are my shoes. There were many of them, but I had to give them some of out because hazizi tashia kwa mgu zote zingine hata zingine kwa mguu kabisa na hata hizi ni unaona hapa apart from this one hii ndio navaa sana sana sababu ina expand na mguu wenye nakuwa zingine zimekaa karibu mwaka mzima i only wash i only clean them and naziosha na zipanguza zingine zimekaa mwaka mzima zijaivaliwa but I also I clean them because Mungu anatuambia tu challenge and I do that naona niko na wili ya kuvaa viatu siku moja and niponye pia niweze kuvaa viatu zangu How was it for your sister when she was told that she is likely to be the donor uh, at first it was not easy mm-hmm. but from the point of mara yetu mkubwa ni mgonjwa it was not easy for them i told them the story that i need a kidney and i watched them they really cried they really cried they are married yes but <sighs> even their husbands it was not easy for everyone uh, i told my parents that i need a transplant and for the first time i saw my dad crying in my entire life i've never seen that man and i love him so much mm-hmm. i have never seen him cry Mm-hmm. But on that day I told them uh, it was not easy for everybody. Um it was surprising. Mm-hmm. And uh, for the last few three years I've been sick. Mm-hmm. My diet changed completely. Mm-hmm. <coughs> <coughs> 
<coughs> sorry, sorry, bro. So sorry. <coughs> My diet changed completely, mm -hmm. and uh, now I'm on, I'm on special diet now. And that special diet, it has so many limitations in life. I cannot enjoy fruits. Ever heard of that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> We all know mtu akigonjeka anaona kuna matunda matunda yongeza nini mhm mm but mimi nimefungiwa matunda I can only take pineapple a piece of it apple a piece of it and watermelon only but nangu ni kitabu fake apple I didn't believe ya kwamba mtu anaweza fungua matunda uh, I also nimefungua most of the foods I can only tell you what I can eat, not what I'm, <laughs> I'm not supposed to eat. Because mm -hmm. the rest of what I'm not supposed to eat is very long. I only take ugari and lice versus cabbage. Period. So I eat ugari leo, jioni mchele, kesho mchele, jioni ugari. It's bit hard because all the other foods out there it have it has something i don't need in my body since my kidney is not working and hayezi metabolism ya mwili fanye vizuri so zikingia kwangu mbili za kusoma so i don't need them mm -hmm. yes i need them but so if i could zikula sababu they won't get out of my body as it pile up and that's another problem. Mm -hmm. That's why I I got myself to in problem of heart failure because mm -hmm. and cause had a damn way fiki ku heart vizuri. fluid intake it's another problem for me. My friend <laughs> Kevin I can tell you mm -hmm. if there's something that I miss it's water. Taking water taking water a little bit of water honestly because the maximum fluid i can take in a day is less than less than 300 ml that is inclusive maji ya dawa chai umekunywa na hata kama ulikuwa unakunywa uji mhm sasa niambia 300 ml in a day what are you doing um some things i can see water i go to kitchen take a glass of water or rather even when i'm cooking i do shed tears looking at water because niko na kiu kabisa siwezi kunywa maji sababu to me to go to her be mom because maji yenyewe hata nikikunywa haitoki kwa mwili sasa na ndio hii ndio maana i can tell you now since the last session ya dairy sis nimekunywa less than 500 ml kwa mwili na bado si hiyo mwili imefura hivyo ningepitisha je baya zaidi mhm mm i nearly sleep at night because when i sleep i'm essentially flat i'm never able to breathe kapsa so i turn this chair to be an expert for me mm -hmm. and most of the time i sleep in this chair seated all night cuz nikila la you flat sit ana kabisa and the fear of lying flat i'm unable to wake to even to support myself ni amke so you sleep seated most yeah. of the time most of the time yeah yes mm -hmm. i sleep seated and sometimes i can sometimes spend an hour standing mm -hmm ata kuketi saa zingine na kwa kumu tu mimi. Yes. Ah, miguu yangu inafaa kukaa hivi. So that ile maji kwa kurudi wapi ndani ya mwili. And uh, if I'm not outside I'm in this seat my feet elevated always. Eh as far as uh, any time that I'm having finance I'm ready 
to do the transplant. Mm -hmm. And we have done the test, actually 50% test. We've done and they are okay. Mm -hmm. So the problem, and the big problem is getting the money to complete the test and the, the whole procedure. Because mm -hmm. even after this procedure, <coughs> uh, I'm sorry to tell you this, but I have to be on medication for the next life. Mm -hmm. Yes. Why? All through. All through. Because uh, this kidney that I'm give, given, it's a foreign thing to my body, despite matching everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's the body is programmed to reject everything that is in a uh, foreign. Foreign. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I need medication to avoid that rejection. Uh -huh. <coughs> I have tried to look for funds in all many ways, mm -hmm. selling everything that I ever owned in life, uh, raising money from friends, family. My family is not in a position to help actually raising for money. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. And uh, basically, when you say you've sold everything, what what have you had to sell? <laughs> starting with household items. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, I took all my savings in life for medication since then. Because every day since 2018, November, when I started dialysis, I go for dialysis for three sessions in a week. But most of the time, I found myself doing twice in a week mm -hmm. because I have no money to pay for that one. Uh, one session goes for 9,500. Mm -hmm. It's a standard fee in Kenya. Mm -hmm. I also need to be on medication. <coughs> and uh, my, medication, my medication costs about 507 bob in a day. Every day since 2018. Mm -hmm. And I have to be on medication to control my BPs. Mm -hmm. Or rather to maintain the bond normal. Since the kidney is not working, mm -hmm. so I have to be on medication so that my body can do the little things it can. Exactly. And now that this comes through to help with the kutum kojo kwa mwili. Because the last time Juliana kucho kukonjo, I can't remember. Mm-hmm. It's long ago. Long ago. No kina ni not even 10 uh, milligrams. Mm-hmm. So basically when you miss these uh, medications or even the dialysis is when your feet swell like this? Yes, this now that is out of excess fluid in my body. In your body. And it goes from this part of the body, goes up. If I miss dialysis now to say uh, twice in a week, <laughs> I'll have a round face. From Sabuntafula Mwiwote kutoka migu, huja vimikono, kiangalia, ziyote ini maji. You see, mm -hmm. right. Now it all the way back up to the So now the excess water in the body uh, ruined my heart. And my heart became big. Like, kind of heart-related issues to a point, the heart failed partially. Mm -hmm. uh, I ought to have done this transplant area with the little money that I had. I had done a fundraising kidogo, to go back to kidogo na to Kanza, the process. Mm -hmm. But along the way, it was stopped because my heart had failed. I was to be treated Kwanza. So now I started treating heart and kidney at the same time. Uh, it has been a journey to treat the heart. Because the whole of 2019, I'm going to Yeah. I uh, retreated for three months in a course of kidogo. One month down the line, to make me fail. So then now you go back to the basic. Mm -hmm. You start again treating the heart. My fanya, na fika mahari na fail tena. Tena na haza tena. Of rate, na yo riba imeaza kufail. Now I have the real guts. Tera na twerking. Kidney, 100%. Heart, 
and they were partially working. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's funny having organs that are not working. It's tough. Yeah. It's <laughs> tough. To me, I don't know, mm -hmm. it's funny, it's tough, but I thank God because having internal organs that are not working and you are still, you, you still manage sometimes to wake up and walk, mm -hmm. not even far. Mm -hmm. It's a miracle. So as of now, how, how do you raise your money for dialysis? Um, or even your rent? I borrow money from everyone that can lend me money. And then after doing some small, small business here and there, I pay back. That's how I managed to raise the money for dialysis. Mm -hmm. Yes. This is my shop, Ebenezer shop. This way, uh, Nashinda Kama see any dialysis. And uh, Nikiana dialysis, my sister and you are in I manage. Especially, size is my earlier coffee. Kama Ayuko, when I've been in Ipunga. But I want to fungu and Niki as a Niki Shindo and a car. The minute I did a Kuan Kipata Madawa. Now, basic things are life. And then you get touch. If you learned, that's another issue because. For the past, for the last five months, I have not been able to pay this house that you say. Oh, yeah. For five months. For five months. The landlord must be so kind to you. <laughs> yes, very kind indeed. Very kind. And my landlord came to know I'm sick when I'm a person that tunesa kana ya pasaizi, and the next minute I'm admitted. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm a person that can wake up today and nishindo takutoka kwa kitanda. And I really do anything on my own. Uh, sometimes, ata kuwaga kwa nyewe nishida. Kuzana kwa nishida. Kuzana kwa not lazy. Kitu. Bimi ni mtu siyezi inama. Ata kufunga kiatu ya nyewe. Mm -hmm. Nishida. All my shoes, if I have to wear them, hazina kamba. Sababu siyezi. Staying alone is a big challenge because you have to do the basic things. You don't need to eat, so you need to cook. How do I cook? I have to pick a maratatu. And by maratatu, I'm in the kitchen, prepare things, you take a list for an hour. You go, on the you take a list. You take a list, then you eat. Only that. So a meal that can take 10 meals, 10 minutes to prepare and eat, how many that you even for hours? Because I find it partially. If you complete without having complications. Mm -hmm. I've collapsed several times in the house due to those issues. I've woke up and I'm unable to do anything, even to pick a call to call somebody for help. And uh, that's when my landlord, one of the day, he missed me. He missed to see me for two days. And he came knocking. And uh, I reported to the Mirada Kwaikite. That's when I told him the story. And uh, he facilitated me to go to the hospital. And actually was admitted for two weeks Whoa. in Kenyatta. Mm -hmm. Yes. Quite not the, all the prayers and the support from my family members and the few friends, those who are still there. Because I have some who have left. It's a journey working with a sick person and especially having a terminal illness. Mm -hmm. People are people are along the way, but I'm going to go to eventually. So I've seen people walking away after this. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of them happened to be my wife. Mm -hmm. Yes. She walked out of your life because of your illness. Somehow being ill is a Yeah. Because when you are unable to do anything on your own, that means you are dependent to other. 
to yeah. the person. Mm-hmm. I think it became hard for her. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't blame her anyway. Mm-hmm. It's only human to, to, to feel that way at some point. I don't blame her. Because I know maybe somewhere else someone might do the same thing. And uh, She oh. left me when I needed her most, actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it's okay. Yeah. How was it for you when you realized that she's no longer there for you? <laughs> she just woke up and left? Yeah. Yeah, even actually she did get it, but she woke up one day mm-hmm. and she told me that this is not going to work for us. And the best we can do is to part ways and kill him to an akivia. Akivia again. Mm-hmm. And uh, health being a priority to me now, I didn't want to argue because that will have added more pain and maybe more sicker than I already am. Mm-hmm. So that was it. And that's how it's operated. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She never checks on you today? She, um, she does. She does call. Mm-hmm. We do talk sometimes. Okay. Ilea, Ilea checking. Hi, how are you? Mm. Uh, that's, mm. But not regularly. It's once in a while. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You wish her well? Of course, yeah, I do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't wish her anything bad in life or anyone else. Eh? Mm-hmm. Because I, I've seen the value of uh, being well or being able to do the basic things in life. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I guess I wish the best in life. Mm-hmm. That's true. Exactly. And that's why I can confirm a hundred times. I just wish I were mm-hmm. yeah. Are there moments you felt like really mm-hmm. giving up? In life? Mm-hmm. Of course I'm human. Mm-hmm. Yes. Because, come on, I'm going to say, and you're not even true. You're hungry and you cannot be, wake up and make tea for yourself. Mm-hmm. You keep asking yourself. I, why do I have to be alive? Come on at a second. It's only human. Mm-hmm. That's true. So at some times, he's almost very zippo. But, and uh, Lisa again. Come on. Come on, there is no need for you to be alive. Mungu wake kwa ali kwa mission that day. Mm-hmm. Yes. So, I mean, he'll say thank you to God. And he'll pray for the day to be good. And he'll move on. Exactly. Yes. Mm-hmm. But I love uh, the fact that you, the smile you put on, <coughs> no, one, no one would really probably know what you're going through. Uh, I have to be strong for myself first mm-hmm. and uh, I would also to see they want to see others in life mm-hmm. getting get being encouraged from this story so I have to be strong for myself so that kama kuna mtu mwingine yako chini anahisi ya kwamba maisha imekuwa ngumu zaidi keep moving keep moving mm-hmm. when you see me just keep, just remember to put yourself in my shoe. What have, what would have James done? Mm-hmm. Exactly. What keeps you moving? Keeps moving. Yeah. Interesting. Mm-hmm. I have a will to live. Mm-hmm. Yes. And uh, I know prayers have done magic for me. Prayers from everyone. Those who knows me, those who I don't know, my parents, my friends, and me being alive mm-hmm. is God's miracle. And I repeat that with a confidence because I've seen those who are actually less ill as compared to me. It's not easy to tell me that having three of us are not working. <laughs> It's a normal thing, no. Mm-hmm. It's not normal, it's yeah, true. Exactly. So, 
mimi kuishi kwangu ni Mungu kupenda i do say that mm-hmm. and uh, i'm always grateful and thankful to god that kila siku anaamka mm-hmm. yeah hata okay. kama sijaweza kufanya chochote kwa siku hiyo mhm thank god ya kwamba niamka niko wahi i know there are a lot of people listening to you right now probably they someone might channel help <coughs> yeah speak to them well uh, to everyone outside here yeah? mm-hmm. national or internationally uh, <laughs> all I'm requesting is give me a second chance in life and by doing that i help me get a kidney and that will give me a second chance in life because mm-hmm. the only way i'll have uh, i'll be able to see tomorrow is me going to theater and having that kidney not kidney transplant that's kidney transplant that's the only way i have fears in life to come mm-hmm. and uh, since i have a a really incompatible donor the only problem and the big challenge is having that money to do the procedure mm-hmm. uh, on my own I've exhausted all the sources and all sorts of I could get money to do the transplant that's why I'm seeking help to everyone out there exactly oh. All I can tell you my brother is that there is hope right and I wish you well I can't wait for the first session when you'll truly be back on your feet I can't wait myself mm-hmm. I can't wait to get a glass full of water mm-hmm. and sleep exactly God will come through for you bro right don't lose heart okay yeah. promise me you won't lose heart now not now mm-hmm. all will be well all will be well all will be well I can feel it's a problem for you even to breathe right yeah 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 mm-hmm. Ndiliyochukulia <laughs> Mhm. <laughs> What am I gonna risk your money yako?
waweze tu kuingilia kati watusaidie kwa kifedha ndio James atibu uh, hapo anarudisha ile maisha yenye alikuwa ya kitambo Easy bro All the best thank you, thank you. I wish you all the best I know you will get out of this Right Thank you Mhm mm James tells me that whatever keeps him going is his desire to see tomorrow and he's always fighting to make sure that he lives on reporting for Tuko News my name is Kevin Phillips Momani